Hello Shares Lovers, Soren here and I have a fantastic game for you from 1989 World Cup. With the white piece is playing Gary Kiasparov and his opponent is Valery Salov. This game was played on the 13th of April 1989 on Kiasparov's 26th birthday. Now let's see how the game went on. Kiasparov started the game with knight f3 and knight f6 by Salov, c4, b6, knight c3, c5, e4, d6, and after d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, the game took the shape of Sicilian defense. We have here this moral c bind where whites c and e pawns control the d5 square, making it difficult for black to free his position with d5. Against moral c, usually black employs a hedgehog formation, which we will see in the game. Bishop b7, black is taking under attack the pawn on e4 square, and instead of going for this f3 or bishop d3 standard moves, Kasparov came up with a very interesting decision and he played queen e2. This is of course blocking the bishop's diagonal, but it turns out that Kiasparov is going to fianche to his bishop. And also in some variations, white can even castle queenside, knight d7, g3, rook c8. Looks like that black is not hurrying to develop his pieces and castle kingside, and actually later this can turn out to be very dangerous for black king. Bishop g2, a6, White castles kingside and a dubious decision by Saul of queen c7. Well, actually, it was not too late either to play e6 or g6. g6 is more solid because e6 can be met with this tricky knight sacrifice. If f takes e6, then e5, and actually, this gives white quick attacking chances. And then king takes g2. If bishop e7, then rook e1. If knight e5, then b3. Later white can bring his bishop on this a3 square and start putting pressure on d6 square. But in the game after castling kingside we see queen c7, b3 and finally we see e6. Solov had been postponing this move for a long time, but now it's late and Kiasparov lands a heavy punch. Knight d5, look at this move. This typical Sicilian sacrifice punishes black for neglecting his development and allows white to start a powerful attack against the king stuck in the center of the board. Queen b8, black is choosing the safest line because accepting the sacrifice could give white a very dangerous attack. For example, if e takes d5, then white can recapture and can announce a discover check. If bishop e7, then knight f5. If knight e5, then White can capture on g7, and then the dark squared bishop is joining the attack, and then knight f5. Actually, black has a very unpleasant position. Or after e takes d5 check, if you move like king d8, of course, this is better than bishop e7, then rook e1, if knight e5, then f4, and then bishop b2. Of course, white has a compensation for the sacrificed piece and has great attacking chances. Let's go back, that's why after knight d5 black responded with queen b8. Now comes rook d1, g6. Still this knight on d5 is hanging, but no one is paying attention to that knight. Bishop g5, bishop g7, bishop takes f6, knight takes f6. Well, if move like bishop takes f6, then after the exchange on f6 square, white can play e5. If knight d7, then e takes d6. If black castles kingside, then after the exchange of light squared bishops rook c1, white has an extra pawn and with an active position, this can give white great chances of going for a win. Let's go back. In the game after bishop takes f6, we see knight takes f6, which is the best continuation, and Kasparov simply captured on b6. Rook d8, and this time here we go e5. Kasparov wants to open up the center of the board and target black king, and that's natural because black hasn't castled yet. Bishop takes g2, well, if move like d takes e5, then knight c6 is very strong. If rook takes d1, then rook takes d1. 
if bishop takes c6 then bishop takes c6 check followed by queen e3 of course white has a huge advantage there are so many problems in black's camp to solve in the game after e5 we see bishop takes g2 he takes f6 bishop takes f6 and now a question arises how is white going to proceed with the game because if a move like king takes g2 then black can simply capture on b6 and knight takes e6 won't give white anything because after f takes e6 queen takes e6 check black can simply cover the king if rook e1 then queen b7 check and actually black stands much better and looks like that black can even defend successfully that's why after bishop takes f6 instead of this weak king takes g2 Kasparov went for another brilliant move and this time he sacrificed the knight on e6 square. Look at this majestic move. F takes e6. Well, if a move like bishop takes e1, you can see that there are so many pieces hanging on the board. Then white can capture on d8 with a discovery check. If king takes d8, then c5. And if rook e8, then queen g4. This is going to be very hard for black to save this position. Or after knight takes d8 check if bishop e5, then this time knight d7 can be very unpleasant for black. A very beautiful move. White is just using this piece all over the board. If queen takes d8, then rook takes d6 and black's position is collapsing. In the game after knight takes e6, black accepted the sacrifice. Now comes queen takes e6 bishop e7 and another powerful move by Kasparov this time c5. Kasparov wants to get rid of this pawn on d6 square at the same time he is protecting the knight on b6. Bishop b7, rook e1, white is creating a mating threat, queen c7, but it turns out that there is no way to stop this c pawn. c6 is on the board. Finally Salov accepted the pawn sacrifice. Well if bishop c8 then white has this knight d5 move and if you capture my queen I am capturing your queen. If king f7 then knight takes e6 this endgame is going to be winning for white. In the game after c6 as I've already mentioned Salov captured on c6 but this steps into another pin rook c1. The threat is rook takes c6. Rook d7 and Kasparov simply captured on d7. Queen takes d7, queen c4, bishop b7, black is covering the c8 square, otherwise if bishop b5 then queen c8 check and then queen e6, if bishop d7 then queen takes d6, yes black has no chance to save this position and then rook c7 is very strong. Let's go back, in the game after queen c4 we see bishop b7, now comes queen c7, rook f8, Queen b8 check, king f7 after which Kasparov played rook c7 and finally Salov resigned. If rook takes b8 then rook takes d7. There are so many threats that black has no chance to survive. If rook e8 simply rook takes b7 the game is over. This was truly a spectacular game for which Kasparov won a brilliant surprise, a brilliant gift on his birthday. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, for more games consider subscribing to my channel, I will see you in the next video.